Good morning and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. There's a true story about the sinking of the Titanic. A frightened woman found a place on one of the lifeboats that was about to be lowered into the sea when she suddenly thought of something she needed and so she asked for permission to return to her stateroom and get it. She was given three minutes. She ran across the deck that was already slanted at a dangerous angle. She raced through the casino where the money had all rolled to one side, ankle deep. In her room, she pushed aside her diamond rings and gold jewelry and reached on a shelf above her bed and grabbed three small oranges. Then quickly she made her way back to the lifeboat and got in. I'm finding as this series goes along that it's a lot easier to talk about sin than it is to speak about virtue. That's never been more true than right now as I try to address the second of the seven godly virtues, prudence or wisdom. And part of why it's so hard is that to a large extent, as the story from the Titanic reveals, what is wise is often determined by the situation. And you see, that's just the point that the Bible often makes. It tries to get a sense of urgency across to us. God's kingdom is here, it says. How do you respond to that? The situation is urgent and wisdom is needed. So often when we think of wisdom, we think of short, pithy platitudes. Things like a stitch in time saves nine, or early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. There are countless thousands of such sayings, all fit for the quotable quotes section in Reader's Digest. But that's not the kind of wisdom we're talking about here. Wisdom as a virtue means to lay a hold to God's wisdom. It means to seek God's guidance and God's will for our lives. It means to lead a life with ears and heart and will attuned to where God chooses to lead and to follow that in trust. It means giving yourself over to the righteous Son of God, come as a baby in a manger and hanging naked and dead on a cross because the story didn't end there, because it's a story of grace and love. A young man was once being interviewed to be a pilot for a steamboat on the Mississippi River. The interviewer, unimpressed by the young man's age and lack of experience, asked if he knew where all the rocks were. The fellow replied, no, sir, I don't, but I know where they aren't. That's the kind of wisdom we must have in life, the kind that keeps to God's path and avoids the rocks and stumbling blocks in our way. The last thing I want to share with you today is a prayer by William Barclay. It's called simply the true wisdom. Let us pray. Grant to us this day, O God, to find the wisdom which is from above Give us the wisdom which is pure, that we may never use our minds to plan an evil thing. The wisdom which is peaceable, that we may live in friendship with all and in bitterness with none. The wisdom which is gentle, that we may ever be quicker to sympathize than to criticize and to praise than to condemn. The wisdom which is open to reason, that we may not be stubborn and self-willed but willing to listen to and to obey the truth. The wisdom which is full of mercy, that we may be as kind to others as we would wish them to be to us. The wisdom which is full of good fruits, that our lives may be lovely with the beauty of holiness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching. And remember to let this day belong to God.